the ascension of King Frederick and Queen Mary to the Danish throne marked the beginning of a new era for the Scandinavian monarchy, akin to the cult status of Prince William and Princess Catherine in the British royal family. Their story from an unassuming meeting in an Australian pub to a magnificent fairy tale wedding that captured the world echoes the charming tale of their British counterparts. The Queen Mary's dedication to her new role was evident from the start, as she embraced Danish culture and traditions with grace and determination. Her conversion to the Lutheran Church and diligent efforts to master the Danish language demonstrated her profound respect for her adopted homeland, earning admiration and respect from the Danish people. Over the years, King Frederick and Queen Mary have maintained an ageless allure. Their unwavering commitment to duty and undeniable charisma have strengthened their position as embodiments of modern royal authority, capable of leading the Danish monarchy into the future. However, their path has not been without challenges. Rumors of discord in their marriage emerged amid speculation about King Frederick's interaction with socialite Genevieve Casanova, casting a shadow over their relationship. Intense public scrutiny intensified, fueling speculation about the state of their marriage. Nevertheless, despite everything, Frederick and Mary remained steadfast in their devotion to each other and their country, demonstrating resilience in the face of adversity and dedication to their royal duties. But the journey of King Frederick and Queen Mary began in the most unexpected of places a quaint bar nestled among the bustling streets of Sydney, Australia. It was September 2000, and Frederick, then a 32-year-old prince, was in Sydney to support Denmark's sailing team at the Summer Olympics. Little did he know that fate had in store for him a chance encounter at the charming Mexican-themed pub Slip Inn. That evening, he met Mary Donaldson, a 28-year-old advertising executive from Tasmania. The pair struck up a conversation, and Mary had no idea that the man she was conversing with so effortlessly was none other than the Crown Prince of Denmark. Fatefully, the royal essence of her newfound acquaintance was revealed to her much later. Enchanted by Mary, Frederick sought her phone number by the end of the evening. Well, reflecting on their first meeting in a candid interview in 2003, Mary recalled when we first met or shook hands. I didn't know he was the crown prince of Denmark. Maybe about half an hour or so later, someone came up to me and said, Do you know who these people are? Later, Mary charmingly added from the very first moment we started talking, we never stopped communicating in the initial stages of their romance. King Frederick X and Queen Mary found themselves in a long-distance relationship, their hearts intertwined, despite the vast distance separating them. For two years, the Danish monarch embarked on clandestine journeys to Australia, where Mary awaited him, the object of his affection dot their love, failed in secrecy remained hidden from prying eyes for over a year romance shielded from the public gaze. However, in November 2001, the veil of secrecy was pierced by the relentless spotlight of the media when a Danish tabloid exposed the secret relationship of the royal couple, thrusting their romance into the limelight. It was one of those relationships where we gradually got closer and closer to each other, despite the geographic distance, reminisced Frederick, reflecting on the challenging path that brought them together. In early 2002, Mary took a leap of faith, bidding farewell to her homeland and relocating from the sun-drenched shores of Australia to the regal splendor of Copenhagen. But her journey was not merely a physical relocation. To affirm her unwavering devotion to her beloved, Mary began immersing herself in Danish culture, mastering the intricacies of the Danish language and embracing the Lutheran Church. On October 8th, 2003, in a moment that would forever be etched in the annals of history, King Frederick X and Queen Mary revealed their love to the world amidst a world amidst a whirlwind of anticipation and excitement. As the spouses took to the stage for an intimate press conference, the air crackled with electricity, and their radiant smiles illuminated the room as they shared the news of their engagement with a crowd of reporters gathered before them. It was a significant moment not only for the besotted couple but for the entire world as Mary prepared to shatter the glass ceiling, becoming the first Australian-born woman to ascend to the throne of Denmark. It, the day unfolded in a whirlwind of celebrations, with Frederick and Mary basking in the glow of their engagement, announcing their plans to exchange vows the following year. After the press conference, the royal couple stepped out onto the balcony of the magnificent Christiansborg Palace in Copenhagen, 
waving to crowds of well-wishers gathered below to rejoice in their happiness. Later that evening, accompanied by the esteemed Queen Margrethe II, the couple visited the halls of the renowned Fridensborg Palace for an elaborate gala dinner hosted by the State Council. Mary's ring, adorned with an exquisite emerald-cut diamond flanked by a pair of ruby baguettes, served as a vibrant tribute to the Danish flag. On May 14, 2004, in the illustrious Copenhagen Cathedral, a revered bastion of Danish traditions, the splendid wedding ceremony sealing the union of King Frederick X and Queen Mary took place. After a touching exchange of vows, the newlyweds embarked on a joyous procession to the majestic Friedensborg Palace, where festivities unfolded in a symphony of joy and revelry. Amidst the opulent splendor of the celebration, Mary was accompanied by a respected retinue of bridesmaids, including her sisters Jane Stevens and Patricia Bailey, as well as dear friend Amber Petty. Meanwhile, Prince Joachim of Denmark, Frederick's brother, stood by his side as his best man. But Mary's wedding dress, crafted by renowned Danish designer Uffe Frank, was adorned with a veil steeped in the rich tapestry of history, once worn by Crown Princess Margrethe of Sweden and later, Queen Ingrid of Denmark. Notably, tears welled in Frederick's eyes as his bride walked down the aisle, and his poignant speech at the reception moved all present to tears as well. In his poetic address, he said to Mary the joy and strength you give me are like the sun in the day, melting away all doubts and darkness on earth with its radiance, and like the moon at night, you shine with a vigilant and tender ray of softness, distinguishing the malice and deceit wielded by symbols of darkness, well, on a crisp autumn day, the world held its breath as King Frederick and Queen Mary welcomed their firstborn, the cherubic Prince Christian Valdemar Henry John, on October 15, 2005, at Riggs Hospital, the esteemed university hospital in Copenhagen. In the tender moments that followed, the Danish prince, adorned with a faint yellow hue due to neonatal jaundice, was cradled in the loving embrace of his parents, though his condition cast a fleeting shadow. The vigilant care of attentive physicians ensured his swift recovery, withbelling all concerns and heralding the beginning of a new life. Frederick said, You cannot stand and pretend to be Superman. We men cannot even in our wildest dreams imagine what happens to a woman. The birth of Prince Christian was warmly celebrated throughout Denmark and beyond, as he marked the first Danish royal heir in three decades. Following the ancient custom prescribing the alternating use of the names Frederick and Christian for Danish monarchs, the newborn prince bore the illustrious name Christian. Including the name John in his moniker was a nod to Princess Mary's Australian roots and served as a tribute to her father. In November 2023, Prince Christian made a firm commitment to uphold the principles of the Constitution, affirming his unwavering dedication to the duties and responsibilities that await him and assuring that he would be able to act as regent if King Frederick were unable to do so. The Princess Isabella of Denmark delighted the world with her presence on April 21, 2007, as the beloved eldest daughter and second child of King Frederick X and Queen Mary. She embodies the legacy of her distinguished lineage with grace and composure. But Isabella was born at Riggs Hospital A, the university hospital in Copenhagen, like her brother, and came into the world amidst great festivity and joy. In a grand ceremony befitting her royal lineage, Isabella was baptized on July 1, 2007, in the royal chapel of Fredensborg Palace. In accordance with Danish royal traditions, her name was announced as Isabella Henrietta Ingrid Margrethe A.S. for education. In January 2020, Isabella began a 12-week course at the Lamania Verbier International School in Verbier, Switzerland, However, her educational journey unexpectedly came to a halt in March 2022. Initially, it was announced that the princess would commence her studies at her Lefsholm School in August of the same year. However, on June 26, 2022, it was announced that Isabella would not be attending her Lefsholm School. The reason for this decision was the troubling reports of ongoing cases of bullying, violence, and sexual harassment on the school premises. In September 2022, amidst a whirlwind of speculation, Isabella began her education in the ninth grade at Ingrid Jesperson Gymnasium in Copenhagen and in August 2023 at Oregard Gymnasium in Hellerup. On January 8, 2011, 
Queen Mary gave birth to two precious bundles of joy, Vincent Frederick Minnick Alexander and Josephine Sophie Ivalo Matilda, who came into the world moments apart. The news of their birth was accompanied by a loud salute from 21 cannons, the royal proclamation of their entry into the world. Over the years, the royal figures have come to know Vincent and Josephine well, especially through their appearances on the balcony. It is during these appearances that Josephine's spirited nature shines through, captivating audiences with her playful antics and infectious charm. In contrast to her energetic sister, Prince Vincent exudes calm confidence, observing from the sidelines as Josephine basks in the limelight. However, despite all differences, the bond between the twins remains unbreakable, a testament to the enduring strength of sibling affection. They celebrated their 13th birthday on the threshold of Queen Margaret's abdication from the throne, as they took the third and fourth places in the Danish line of succession. The twins often appear on the Danish royal Instagram page, and each birthday is marked by an official photograph, where they look charming, usually dressed in matching attire. This year, they looked impeccable in matching blue suits with a light blue tie on Vincent and a light blue blouse on Josephine. The Olympic Games hold a special place in the hearts of King Frederick X and Queen Mary, symbolizing not only their shared love for sports, but also their commitment to international unity and cooperation. Their illustrious journey to the Olympic Games began in Athens in 2004, just months after their charming wedding ceremony, initiating a tradition that would span continents and transcend generations. From the snowy slopes of Turin in 2006 to the bustling streets of Beijing in 2008 and the picturesque landscapes of Vancouver in 2010, the royal couple graced every city hosting the Olympic Games with their regal presence. With each Games, they imbued the spirit of camaraderie and sporting excellence. And let's be honest, the opportunity to celebrate their relationship every four years with something as grand as the Olympic Games is incredibly romantic. Their unwavering commitment to the Olympic movement was further solidified in 2009 when King Frederick was honored with the prestigious privilege of being inducted into the esteemed International Olympic Committee. Embarking on London in 2012, Sochi in 2014, and Rio de Janeiro in 2016, Frederick and Mary continued to champion Olympic ideals, inspiring future generations to embrace the transformative power of sport. Their enduring legacy as staunch advocates of the Olympic movement stands as a testament to their unwavering dedication to the cause of promoting global harmony and goodwill through sport. King Frederick and Queen Mary supported significant changes in the royal family, announcing their support for Queen Margrethe II's decision to revise roles within the monarchy. At the age of 54, the heir to the throne publicly spoke about his mother's decision to strip titles of prince and princess from his younger brother Prince Joachim's four children for the first time. Speaking at an event near one of Copenhagen's schools, Frederick expressed his agreement with his mother's decision, emphasizing his belief in the necessity of a more orderly and modern monarchy. Dot addressing journalists, Frederick emphasized his mother's autonomy in decision making, stressing that he firmly supports her vision of a more streamlined monarchy. He refuted claims of discord within the family stating that he communicates regularly with his brother. Despite recent events, the king affirmed his commitment to maintaining family unity, acknowledging the complexity of the situation as a personal matter. The in May 2018, in the presence of respected European royal figures, including monarchs from Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, Frederick appeared in full military attire accompanied by Queen Mary, who looked splendid in a light pink dress. The ceremony was absent the Queen's husband and Frederick's father, Prince Henrik, who passed away in February of the same year after a prolonged illness. Earlier on his special day, Frederick greeted the public by appearing on the balcony of Amlienborg Palace. The festive celebrations began several days prior when artist Ralph Hymans unveiled a series of commemorative portraits of Frederick, captured alongside members of his family. Regarding Queen Mary's 50th birthday, which occurred in February 2022, numerous portraits were released in anticipation of this milestone. An announcement on the Conchuset website, presented by the Danish Royal House, stated on the occasion of Her Royal Highness the Crown Princess's 50th birthday on February 5, 2022, 
New official ceremonial portraits of the Crown Prince couple will be published. The portraits were taken by photographer Hass Nielsen at the residence of the Crown Princess at the 8th Amelienborg Palace. Initially, a grand celebration was expected to commemorate Mary's significant birthday. However, due to concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was postponed, and instead, a private celebration within the family circle was organized. In a rare instance, King Frederick publicly expressed his sincere gratitude to his beloved wife, Queen Mary, on Instagram. He delighted followers with an intimate photo of his spouse, of Australian origin, enjoying ice cream, drawing attention to their intimate moments. Accompanying the photo was a tender message written by the king himself in honor of the couple's anniversary. Today is a special day for us. We celebrate our wedding anniversary. He wrote, reflecting on the significance of this event, not only for themselves, but also for their cherished family of four children. In a touching gesture, King Frederick also noted the coincidental alignment of their anniversary with Mother's Day, acknowledging Mary's dual role with grace and devotion. This year, our anniversary coincides with Mother's Day, giving this event additional significance, he said, expressing genuine feelings of love and gratitude to Mary as his beloved spouse and caring mother. In October 2023, King Frederick X embarked on a private trip to Madrid, coinciding with Queen Mary's visit to New York for United Nations Day. During his stay in Spain, the Spanish tabloid lecturers captured photos of Frederick with Mexican socialite Genevieve Casanova as they toured a Picasso exhibition and dined together. The tabloid went further, claiming that the king spent the night at Casanova's apartment, citing eyewitnesses who claimed to have seen him enter late in the evening and leave seven hours later. However, Casanova vehemently denied rumors of a romance with Frederick. Casanova firmly denied these claims, stating I categorically deny statements suggesting romantic relations between myself and Prince Frederick initially. Frederick was supposed to attend the Bukasau exhibition accompanied by a mutual friend. However, due to the friend's illness, Casanova was asked to accompany him. Amidst the speculation in tabloids, Queen Mary demonstrated her solidarity with her husband by wearing a necklace with the letter F during an engagement in Copenhagen just a few days later. Against the backdrop of these rumors, there were suggestions that Queen Marguerite the II's abdication from the throne was motivated by a desire to preserve the stability of Frederick and Mary's marriage. The coronation of King Frederick X of Denmark took place on a Sunday in an atmosphere of jubilation and national unity in the heart of Copenhagen, leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of the Danish people. The historic event was marked by several highlights, such as Prime Minister Met Frederiksen's loud proclamation of King Frederick from the balcony of Christiansborg Palace. Following the official proclamation, Frederick joined his family, culminating in tender embraces and a kiss with his wife, Queen Mary, who was bestowed the title of Queen Consort. Meanwhile, their eldest son assumed the mantle of Crown Prince Christian, stepping into the role of Denmark's lawful heir to the throne with a sense of solemn duty and responsibility. The flurry of activity surrounding the Danish monarchy in recent weeks was sparked by Queen Margrethe II's unexpected abdication from the throne during her traditional New Year's address. Despite her previous statement that the role of monarch is a lifelong commitment, Margrethe evidently felt the need to reassess her circumstances, leading to a series of events culminating in Frederick's ascension to the throne alongside Mary, the woman who has stood by his side for so long.